Hello. Welcome to this section where we'll talk about how to install and, uh, you know, we download and install PFSense. PFSense is actually an open source firewall that you can leverage on your environment. But in this case, we'll be using a virtual machine, a virtual box to install PFSense and uh, so let's download it. Let's stay in this section. First of all, we go to PFSense page. This page will be actually be in the download section, um, in the comment section, or we add it as a caption in the video. So visit pfsense.org, so then slash download. You select AMV AMD 64 bit because this is a 64 bit system. If you are using a 32 bit, you have the option to select 34 bit in the architecture. The installer will want to download the ISO. That is the Dix image for it because we are running it on a virtual box. And we select the language. This is the mirror language, which will or we speak English here. Yeah, we'll select um, a US. So if you're in Germany, if you're in Singapore, you select and you click on download. I'm not actually downloading it now because I already have it in my system. So this is it after it has been downloaded. We will have to move to our virtual box where we need to install it. So this is our virtual box. I surely have it installed, but I walk through how you can also install your own. So we click on new, we give it a name, let's say PFSense. Then we select the ISO image. And we click on next. You assign base memory, the processor, it's a firewall, so you don't really need much. It just maybe like you can give it one or we can give it two processors, the base memory is okay. Then we next create a virtual disk or use an existing one. So I want to use an existing one, then a next. Then we'll finish and we have it here. So we run it. So it's powering up now. So we can see it's going to load a GUI then. This is the installer we accept. So we select install PFSense. We select the guided route. And we continue, proceed to installation. You know, we select no redundancy. Then you can use your space bar to select the addicts and you okay. Then I said I should go and destroy this content. I don't know if you have any other content, but I have PFSense installed earlier. So let's say if I say yes. Then it's going to start the installation process.
Let's just wait until this is installed. After the installation is done, we have to reboot the system. Mind you, when you're setting up this um, PF sense, we have to give it a two network adapter that will be useful. One will be inbound and one will be outbound. So let's go and give it uh, the second ad network adapter. We'll go to our variable settings. Click on settings. Then we go to our network. <clears throat> Then we'll give it a second adapter because the system is still running. We cannot assign another adapter to it. Let's wait. So, our system is off now. Go to the network settings. So, done. Go to network settings. Go to second adapter. We enable the second adapter and because it's a virtual box, we want an inbound and outbound um, communication, then we give it host only. So it is going to be able to connect to other devices on this uh, space. And we'll give this NAT so they can connect to the internet. I will click OK. So, not to take much of our time, spin up our machine. So we've rebooted and we have our PF sense powering up. So it looks like a shell to so keep powering up and um, doing necessary stuff. So when we when it's done, we we'll continue to configure our interfaces. Yes, it's done and kind of, we can see we have our interfaces configured. We have the, the one and the LAN. So we have successfully installed PFSense. So we can see that we've successfully installed PFSense and the two uh, IP addresses are from the two network adapter that we have assigned to the PFN, one, the one, and the LAN, EM0, EM1. So in some cases, you will need to manually give it an uh, IP address or a network adapter IP addresses. So you can see we have so many options from zero to, to 16. So you can see from zero to 16, you can decide to do 14. So 14 is enabling SSH. So say so this is currently enabled we like to disable, say no. So, <clears throat> excuse me. 
you can reboot the system, ping an host, or assign interfaces if you want to. You can log out SSH in case you, you have a SSH section logged in. So let us sign in into our interface where you can actually set rules and do a whole lot of stuff in it. Yes, so when you pick the LAN's IP address, you can you can see you're able to log in and the default login is admin. The password is pfsense. So we've logged in into our PFSense firewall. So basically before you could able to access this IP address from your system, put your system, your maybe your primary OS or your installed operating system, maybe the Kali Linux or the Windows installed on your virtual machine will be on the same network with your firewall. So this is our dashboard. Can this, these are different things you can do on the firewall. Traffic shipper schedules, not on the like. So if you want to set through, you go to rules and you go to learn and you can see different rules that we can decide to configure. If you want to add a rule, you can add a rule here. And we select what the the rule is going to do. Is it that the rule blocks or passes? We can block, can reject. So we can disable a rule, and we can select the port number, this destination source. Maybe you want to you want to block all ports, or you want to specify what spot you are blocking or if is it that you are going through the network and you see can select the source IP address. So this invert match probably you are saying to block a particular port or you want to leave maybe one port open, you can invert this rule such that it's going to tell you that if you block a port, leave this port open. So basically we have gone through and to install PFSense, download, install, and how to configure rules on the PFSense open source firewall. Thank you for this video. See you in our next video when we when we have a, a, a Windows where we have my SQL installed. We will try to configure rules to block some port on my, on my SQL server. We'll continue in our next video.